Good morning and uh, welcome. It's Easter Sunday. Uh, whether we are in our homes or our apartments, like we've been saying, there, this is unprecedented. In 2,000 years, never have we done this before. And I, again, I want to say thanks to our team. You don't see most of them. They're behind the scenes. Let them hear you. Um, and I'm super excited because they said this week I could stand. Uh, because I have been sitting every week and I'm not a sitting preacher. I've tried that before. Some of you have been uh, with Core Church long enough and I just feel constrained. And so this week they said, all right, you, you can stand. But because of the shot and because of the boom mic they've got, I, I am confined to this little area right here. So basically I can move from here to here. This is about it. And honestly, this will be pretty easy for me because uh, this was my senior prom with Laura. <laughs> Just, just like this. So is it okay if I preach like this? No, I'm not going to do that the whole time. But I, I'm going to try to stay in here because if I go out here, see, it's they're, they're yelling at me right now. They're saying, no, Brad, the, the mic's not working right. Okay, so I'm, I'm just glad we're somehow, some way able to do this. And wherever you are watching, well, my prayer today is, is that what we're going to talk about is going to bring you some encouragement in the middle of all this mess that we have all been going through. So we're in our series called He Is, and we've been talking about how fear is, anxiety is, depression is, um, overwhelmed is, because you're, you're dealing with, uh, some of you have had to go online with your, with your kids and do schooling that you've never done before. Every homeschooled parent right now is mocking you. Ha 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 ha, I've been doing this forever. I know how it works. But m most of you don't, and so there's some stress that comes with that. Some of you have been furloughed from work or you've been laid off from work, business owners shutting down, and, and it's just overwhelming right now. And it's in moments like this, in order to get our faith back, to get re-centered, we've got to remember who he is. So that's what we've been doing during this series. And so today I want to talk to you on this Easter Sunday that he is going before you. He is going before you. And so we're going to look at the account of the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus today because it is Easter. So if you have a Bible, we're going to be Matthew chapter 27. If you don't have a Bible, Version is a great app for you to download. And in Matthew 27, it gives us the, the account where Jesus was betrayed, where he was, he was beaten, and, and then we see where he was crucified. And then we come to this place in verse 50. So go to verse 50 of Matthew chapter 27. By the way, if you're brand new to church and you're like, who's this Matthew guy? Let me just tell you, Matthew was one of the followers of Jesus, and he wrote what we know as one of what we call the four Gospels. And he just wrote the account as he followed Jesus, and as he saw it firsthand, as he talked to eyewitnesses, he just wrote down the account of Jesus. And he was there when Jesus was crucified. And so we're looking at the death and the resurrection of Jesus through the eyes and the lens of Matthew. So that's why when you can look at maybe Mark or Luke or John's account, you're looking through their, their lens, and it's just a little bit different. But it's still so powerful. Look with me at verse, verse 50 of chapter 27. This is Jesus. He's been on the cross for hours, hours in agony. And then it says, then Jesus shouted again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart. Listen to this. Tombs were open. The, the bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. And if that's not crazy enough, this I, got, I just got to tell you, just hearing this for me personally, I'm thinking if that account happened right now, and down the street at the graveyard, this, this would be a little freaky, kind of walking dead kind of stuff. But Matthew was there. He saw it. And then it says this, they left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection. So they were resurrected from the dead after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And then they went into the city of Jerusalem and they appeared to many people. Today, I want to talk to you about he is going before you. Let's pray. God, on this Resurrection Sunday, we stop and we are just so grateful for our salvation. We are so grateful for the opportunity to be extended for salvation. This idea of grace and mercy and it being so free and the celebration of this moment today, that even though we're not together, 
the greatest moment in history that we are focused on together in this moment. May your spirit visit us wherever we are at and speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. And wherever you are, even in this house, say amen. Amen. All right. Uh, so I don't know if you've ever been lost. All of us have been lost at some point. But have you ever been lost um, because you were following somebody else? That's the worst. When It's bad enough when you get yourself lost, but when you're following somebody that's supposed to know where they're going and they get you lost, it's so frustrating. But what's not only frustrating but humiliating is if you're the person in the lead and you get everybody lost. That happened to me a couple of years ago. Uh, Laura and I were with family and we were at a wedding in Dallas, Texas. And after the wedding, uh, we were all going back collectively, the entire family, back to the hotel where we were all staying. And I just, uh, by default, was the lead car. And I was like, oh, I got this. I'll pull out Google Maps and I'll just Google it. Well, Google Maps was not finding the hotel and it wasn't getting the correct route. And so I just looked at Laura and I go, I got this. <laughs> I got it. Uh, but a couple of quick turns and I realized I didn't, I, I, I didn't have it. Um, but I was faking it. I was like, oh, no, I'm sure it's right up here. I, I, I kind of know where we're going. You've ever, you ever done that? You're like, I, oh, no, we're, we're, we're good. And, and it just, how do I state this? It, it just, the neighborhood was changing and getting, it was getting rougher and rougher and rougher. And Laura's like, are you sure? And I'm like, well, I, I think I'm sure we're going to come out of this. You ever had that one where you're like, oh, I know I'm just right on the other side. We're going to be good. But it just kept getting rougher and it got so bad. Laura said, pull over right now, turn around, get us out of here. Because we weren't, we weren't in the neighborhood. There was nobody there saying, hey, won't you be my neighbor? There was nobody there doing that. We were in the hood, not the neighborhood, but the hood. And, and where I pulled over across the street was this barbecue joint. But I'm not sure it was a barbecue joint because um, I don't think it was ribs that they were smoking. If you know what I mean. And they, there were people, they were going in and out and they were coming out with little baggies. And I don't think there was brisket in those bags. And there was a lot of coming and going. And so the most humiliating moment was my brother-in-law came up and tapped on the window and he said, hey, um, why, don't you, why don't you let me take the lead? That's the worst when your brother-in-law, I mean, talk about being humbled. I just crawled in the back seat and I just, I got, I got in the infant carrier and I said, that's fine. I'll just be back here if you need me. Like when, when you are headed somewhere, you want to know the person that is leading you knows where they are going. We all want to know that person that's in charge can take us where we're supposed to be going. And right now, here we are in the middle of this crisis and we are all looking for leaders that can show us the way to go, that have competence. So we're looking to the who, and I don't know why Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend are in charge right now, but hey, I have been waiting and waiting. I have been saving that up for weeks to use that joke. Got it in. And maybe, maybe if you're, Wow. Maybe <laughs> it's that way. All right. Uh, may, may, maybe you're looking to the CDC. Uh, that's changing daily. So I don't know if I can follow them. Or uh, maybe you're, you're looking to Washington or, um, or it's Dr. Is it Fauci? Am I saying his name right? Is it Fauci? I, it's the short guy with the glasses. You guys know who I'm talking about? Yeah. That's the guy I'm following right now. I'm telling you, I don't know how you are, but every time I see him go to the microphone, I'm like, shh. This guy knows what he's doing. Like, I don't think anybody else knows what they're talking about. But Dr. Fauci, I see the short guy with the glasses. I'm, I'm following that guy. Like, we all want to know that the person that we're following knows where they're going. And I'll tell you, I'm thankful for some of the leadership that we have in the middle of this crisis. Where would we be if we didn't have strong leaders to help us through this? But I want to encourage you today to let Jesus lead you through this crisis. Let Jesus lead you through this crisis. And here's, here's why. When you look at Matthew chapter 27, what you see is, is that, man, he's been through it all. He's been through it all. He's, he's seen it all. And he's risen above it all. In, in other words, you can trust in him because he has gone before us. He has been there. And there's nothing that we can experience 
that he has not experienced. Look, look back at the beginning of Matthew, Matthew chapter 27. It tells us right here, he was bound. Jesus was bound. They, they chained him. And in other words, you, you feel a sense of loss of control. Jesus felt that loss of control. Now, of course, as the son of God, he was in complete control, but he, he's bound and he is being led where maybe a, a human does not want to be led. He was bound. It says he was betrayed. And his best friend, one of his best friends, a guy who'd spent three years with him, stabs him in the back. He, he's experienced what we've experienced. It tells us that he was, he was beaten with a, a lead-tipped whip. Beaten, like the lashes cut through his skin. Have you experienced something that's painful in your life? Listen, he has gone before us in suffering. He's, he's experienced every form of suffering that we could have ever experienced. He's gone before us. The prophet Isaiah, he wrote this about the coming Messiah, and this was before Jesus came in the Old Testament, and he said this about the Messiah that was to come. It says this, He was despised and he was rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. He has gone before you in suffering. I'd like for you to write this down. He goes before me in suffering. He goes before me in suffering. Here's the thing. Sometimes God will shelter us from suffering, and we are so thankful for when he shelters us from suffering. But most of the time, we have to go through suffering. It's like that old kid's song, uh, Going on a Bear Hunt. Anybody remember that? Everybody have your mom ever sing that to you? We have uh, four kids, and Laura sang that. I've heard that song so many times, going through four different kids. And my kids were like, seriously, Mom? I'm in high school now. Do I have to do it with you? You know? Okay, going through the grass, going through the river, going through the, the mud, you know, all these different things. And in the song, come on, it, it says what? You... You, you can't go under it. You can't go over it. You can't go around it. Come on, in the room, you got to go through it. You got to go through it. Right now in your life, it might feel like the bear is eating you alive. I mean, you're, you're just trying to stay on top. Like if you're a mom or a dad, you're trying to stay on top of this homeschooling thing now, or you're trying to learn this new program and get your kids online, and it's just completely overwhelming you. Or maybe you've had a cutback at, at work, and you've lost your job, or your small business has had clothes, or, or maybe it's a crisis on top of a crisis um, that you've had something else that's happened in, in your life. Or maybe it's just the virus, <laughs> And it just feels like this, it's just creeping in and it's getting closer and closer and closer. Here's the thing. We do not get to choose what we go through. We don't get to choose. We don't get to choose the abuse that you go through. You don't get to choose betrayal. You don't get to choose injustice. You don't get to, to choose a, a virus to, to go through. But we do get to choose how we will go through it. We do get to, to choose our, our mindset. We do get to choose our attitude. We do get to choose what our, our perception is going to be in, in the middle of this. We can, we can choose uh, fear or we can choose faith. We can, we can choose confusion or we can choose confidence. We, we can choose despair or we can choose hope. We can, we can choose to just give up and walk away or we can choose to press through, walk through, and keep moving forward. But when you are under great stress, has this ever happened to you? When you're under great stress, you lose the ability to think straight. I think that's happening to all of us, all of us right now. We're under so much stress right now. Have you noticed that? I've noticed like it, the, the, your thinking power is not there anymore. It's so hard right now to think straight because of the pressure and the stress that we're under. I mean, it's, it's happened to Laura and I. Like, here, look at this picture. So this was just uh, last week. Um, Laura's been talking to stuffed animals. I, she's just uh, me. Like, like I, I, I just don't even care what I'm wearing anymore. I, I showed up for church today in a shirt that was wrinkled, like it was laying in the corner. And I started to go into on the set, and Laura's like, "You're not doing that, are you?" And I'm like, "What?" And I, I didn't even notice my shirt was a wreck, and so she was off camera frantically ironing my shirt before I even came on. We lose this ability to think straight and we can tend to kind of crack under the type of pressure that we're under. But Jesus, we see here, Jesus, 
man, he suffered with strength. Like Jesus, he, he was bound. He was betrayed and he was beaten, but he never lost heart. Like he never gave up. He never lost sight of the mission. He just kept pressing forward. And so what I want to encourage you to do, whether it is this current crisis or it's another crisis on top of this crisis that you're going through, I want to encourage you today, suffer with strength. Suffer with strength. What I mean by that is suffer with the strength of the Lord. Like lean into him right now. Like you can, you can trust him and he can give you supernatural strength to persevere and to keep moving and to keep pressing forward no matter how bad it gets. Why? Because he went before us in suffering. He, he, think of this way, he carved this path for us. Like he, he made a way for us and not only did he make a way for us, but then he draws close to us and he walks with us through it. This is what the psalmist said in Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. It says this, the Lord is, is what? Say these words with me. He is close to the broken hearted. Yeah. He's close to you right now. I don't know what you're facing. I've been on the phone all week talking to so many different people. And so many people are in such a different place. And some of you, it's just really devastating right now. He's close to the brokenhearted. Like I talked to a friend of mine who lost his dad this week, and he's got to figure out if he's going to go to the funeral tomorrow. And it's in Louisiana. And can I even go to Louisiana? If I come back, do I have to, <laughs> do I have to um, self quarantine for 14 days? Do I go? Is it safe? And some of you, I want you to know this right now. He's close to you. He's close to the brokenhearted. And then it says this, he, he rescues. Look, can we just encourage, wherever you are, encourage somebody next to you. Turn, neck, turn to somebody and just tell them, he's going to rescue you. Come on, turn to somebody and tell them, he's going to rescue you. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. It reminds me of the story of the disciples when they were in the storm. I know many of you, if not most of you, are familiar with that story. And if you're not, Matthew was in that boat and they were a lot of the guys on the boat. Matthew was a tax collector, so he was freaking out. He didn't know anything about, you know, sailing. But, but some of the guys did. They were professional fishermen, but, but they were taking on water. It says they were scared to death because the, the boat was going to capsize. It was going to sink. They were not going to make it. And then Jesus comes walking to them on the water. And it's not like he just, you know, I'm going to walk. I'm sorry. I'm not. But he, he, it's like he's walking. It's not like he just walked by. Good luck, guys. Hope you figure it out. No, 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 no. Jesus didn't do that. He came and he, what did he do? He got into the boat with them because he knew they were afraid. He knew their faith. He wasn't belittling them. He wasn't just like, what's wrong with you guys? He just simply just got in the boat and he calmed the storm. This is who Jesus is. He is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Right now, we're all practicing social distancing. I've been talking about that the past few weeks. And some of us, we are frankly enjoying this time uh, <laughs> because that means, hey, nobody can hug me. I'm liking this because, uh, frankly, sometimes on a Sunday, I get random hugs from strangers. And I'm just, I'm not a hugger. I just, it's, it's, I, I mean, I try to embrace it and, I, and I'm like, hey, but it's just, I'm just not a hugger. I mean, I, I do hug the people that I love and I care about. Although that's awkward for me to say that because now you're like, oh, so you don't hug me. Do you not love me? Do you not care about me? <laughs> My point is, my point is this: that I, I, for some of us, we're like, man, I, I like this. I'm going to keep this six foot thing uh, uh, going here, because I imagine I'm just thinking in my head right now. I probably shouldn't have said this, because when we do start meeting back again, there's some of you, and oh, I'm already feeling your hug. You're just going to hug me because you know I don't want it. But I'm just saying, ha, six feet, six feet. <laughs> but right now, um, in the middle of, of what we're facing right now, it can feel as if God is practicing social distancing. Mm. Like, where is he? Like, where is he? Why is he not helping me? And, 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 and why can't I hear his voice? And 
the, the scripture says he's close, but I, I, don't, I don't sense him close at all. And what I want you to know is this is in a, in a crisis, God does not pull away. In a crisis, Christ actually draws closer. Let me say that again. In a crisis, Christ actually draws closer. And in a moment like that, what he does in the moment of a crisis, he begins to pour out his, and I was talking to my friend about this, that when his father died, he, when you're in that moment, God just supernaturally pours out grace. He pours out mercy. He pours out his kindness. He pours out his, his compassion. But truthfully, in the middle of a difficult, difficult time in your life, it can feel like, like God's pouring alcohol on an open wound. That's what it really feels like. I, I don't know how it was when you grew up, but when I grew up, my mom, if I had a cut on my hand or on my arm, she would make me put my arm over the sink and she would pour rubbing alcohol over an open wound. Are you kidding me? But, but, but part of that, I, I don't know if she, she just felt good about that. And I know moms today are like, I would never do that to my child. But that's old school. We just clean the wound. But you had to do that if you were going to clean the wound because she didn't want it to get infected and she wanted it to heal properly. And it can feel like God is, is pouring alcohol on an open wound. But, and when that happens, like when my mom was pouring the alcohol over my arm, I just wanted to pull it back. And I wanted to just move away. And whenever we experience pain and suffering, we want to pull back from God. We want, to, we want to pull away, but I want to encourage you, don't pull away from God. The, the more painful it is, the more the struggle you're in, I want to encourage you, no, press into God. Press into God. Press into God and, and press through the pain. Let God wash over you and trust that his grace, his mercy, his kindness, and his love are washing over you because he goes before you in suffering. So verse 50, it says this, where we come to, to the end. And it says this, then Jesus shouted out again and he released his spirit. Think about that. No supernatural intervention. Like he didn't, he didn't have to die. Like he could have called down angels. He, uh, God could have rescued him. God could have said, no, but we, listen, no supernatural intervention. The, the crowd standing around, they're like, they're waiting for it. They're like, hey, you know, he saved others. Why can't he save himself? So they're mocking him. And then the disciples who followed him for three years. And he's like, didn't he say he was the Messiah? Didn't we see him do miracles? He walked on water. Why is he not pulling himself off of that cross? But it, it didn't happen. Jesus died. Sometimes we just kind of gloss over that, but let's stop. Think about this. From Jesus died. This is important on so many levels, but here's the thing I want you to focus on right now. Is he goes before me in death. If you're taking notes, write that down. He goes before me in death. Some of you have, have experienced a form of death. Some of you are experiencing a form of death right now. Some of you experienced the death of a marriage where somebody came in and said, um, I, don't, I don't love you anymore. Or like a lady I ran into at the grocery store who said, yeah, um, I came home and everything was gone. That's death. Some of you have experienced abuse in your life. You're, you're, you're alive, but you're, you're not alive because something was taken from you and you, you can't get that, that back. And some of you experienced betrayal like Jesus. I mean, a family member or a friend that you, just, you thought had your back and instead they, they stabbed you in the back and it was so brutal. Or just like right now. In the middle of this crisis, some of you are experiencing a form of, of death as you, uh, you got a loss of job and you're wondering, am I, I mean, it was a small business, so some of you are small business owners and you're like, you're never going to get that income back. Some of you are wondering, I had multiple locations. Are we going to be able to even open up every location? And then what about the employees? Some of you have been employed by a small business owner and you're like, uh, they're not going to open up anymore and they're not going to come back. I don't have a job when I... When I come back, some of you have been 
thinking about some money you've been setting aside for your kids because they're you know, one day I'm gonna put them through college and you're like where is that now and it's it's just gone I mean this idea of death it comes to all of us and this just the virus that is happening around COVID-19 three or four weeks ago most of us didn't really know anybody that had it we didn't know anybody that had it now I think many of us, if not most of us, we at least know someone who's gotten COVID-19 and you probably know someone who has died from COVID-19. It's become so real. And when these things happen in our lives, it's so hard because it can't be undone. There's, there's no undoing it. Uh, you can't get it back because it's, it's just gone forever. And in moments like this, it's just so easy to give up and just stop living. It's just so easy to just kind of get, get trapped and, and close yourself off from friends and family and people that love you in the world around you and just get stuck. It's, it's like you ever lost something valuable. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you need it. You got to have it. You, you, honestly, you can't, it's hard to exist without it. And so you're frantically looking around the house or looking around the object. Where, where is it? Did, you know, it's like when you lose something that's valuable, you shut everything down. Like everything shuts down no matter what you were doing. I have got to find this. And, and then you involve others. You've done that. Like you involve your whole family. Like, I don't care if you're getting caught up on Tiger King, get over here and help me right now. You start looking in places you know it is not. Like you're searching through kitchen cabinets. You're like, I know it's not here, but we're pulling everything out. You wake up in the middle of the night and you're having hypertension because you're like, ah, where, where is it? You just, you shut down. It's so hard to move on. What happens is in, instead of moving forward, we can get stuck searching for what we, what we lost. Like what have you lost? Man, when, you, when you're spending your time just searching, you can end up going backwards instead of moving forward. And Matthew tells us that when, when Jesus lost it all, when, when it was all over, it says this, Jesus released his spirit back to God. So what is it you've lost? What is it that you need to, to release back to God? If you, don't, if you don't release what you lost, what's going to happen to you is you're, you'll always be in bondage to the past. If you, don't, if you don't release it, if you don't let go of it, you're always going to be stuck over here. And here's what's going to happen. Then you're going to carry the past into your new future. Like last week, I was telling you how I, uh, in my radio career, long before ministry, um, I lost my job, which is a which is a nice way of saying I got fired. And uh, I was talking about uh, digging the graves. You remember that last week? Well, I don't know if I shared this last week, but I I went through two years um, out of my career field, and it just rocked me because I I had um, I'd had incredible success at, in what I was doing. Uh, incredible success. And I didn't understand, why am I not getting another job? It took me two years. And when I, when I finally got back into the radio industry, uh, I, I struggled because whenever my boss would ring the intercom and say, hey, Brad, could you come down and talk to me for a minute? I, I would start having anxiety because I thought, this is it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get fired. I know, I know this is it. And I, I remember being on, on the morning show and I would, I would be doing the morning show and in the midi, middle of trying to do something and entertain people and things, I'd be wondering, I got to be careful. I don't say the wrong thing because if I say the wrong thing, I could end up and I could get fired. What happened to me was I lost my confidence and my security way back here. And, and, and what I did is I went, look, I just, I just stayed back here and I got trapped back here and I, and I took my insecurities and my lack of confidence into my New job. I carried it with me. I never overcame that. And so when I, I remember every August would roll around and, and I would start having anxiety because it was in August when I lost my job and I carried insecurity and, and my lack of confidence and it affected me in my new job. Hey, listen, if you hang on to what you lost, you'll get trapped in the bondage of the past. You've got to release it, release it and give it to God because he, he goes before you. In death, he's experienced it. And not only that, but with God, here's the good news. There is always hope of a resurrection. 
always hope of a resurrection. And, and we see that right here. Look what happened next in verse 51. It says, the earth shook, rocks split apart, tombs open. This is when Jesus died. And then it says, the bodies of many godly men and women who were died were raised from the dead. So the, the tombs are open. And then we move forward a few days. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, they were raised from the dead. Write this down. He goes before me in resurrection. He goes before me in resurrection. In other words, Jesus' suffering, Jesus' death, it was not in vain. And your suffering and the death that you have experienced, those have not been in vain. God can shake the very foundation of your situation. He can open up tombs. He can resurrect dead things. He can bring you to new life. That's what Easter is all about. That's why we are celebrating this event right now. I love the way that Matthew kind of, uh, the, the climax of the moment when Jesus was resurrected, he says it this way in Matthew chapter 28, just a couple chapters later. It says, early on Sunday morning as the what? Come on, say it with me wherever you are. New day was dawning. A new day is dawning. Turn to somebody around you and tell them, hey, a new day is dawning for you. A new day is dawning for you. I, I love uh, sunrises and I love sunsets. And I don't know where you're watching from if you're not in Oklahoma, but I'm telling you, we have the best sunrises and sunsets in Oklahoma. Can I get an amen in the house here? We, I mean, that is the best part about living in Oklahoma. I, I was coming up to the church um, a couple days ago and the sun was rising. I love sunrises. And I, I just kind of captured this picture here. And you, frankly, in Oklahoma, you take one every day if you want, but this is the one I captured. And in that moment, I, I just stopped the car and I just stared at the sunrise. And I thought, man, it's pretty messed up right now, God. Just, it's so much chaos, and I don't even know when any of this is going to end. But when I looked up and I saw the sun rising, I was like, you're still in control. <laughs> you're still in authority. You're still sovereign over all things. And the darkness has to bow to the light. Yeah. Darkness always has to bow yeah. to the light. And what I want you to know is that a new day will dawn. Mm -hmm. A new day will dawn for you. Your suffering will be over. And death, man, Paul says, death, where is your sting? Death does not have the final word because in Jesus, there is always hope of a resurrection. So just remember this Easter, he's going before you.